Okay, next slide, please. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just kind of um, take a look at the agenda and some of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, for some of you, this will be brand new if you have a ninth grader for the first time. For others, it might just be a review. Um, and hopefully everyone will learn something um, they didn't know before. Um, there's a lot of information here. Um, but we're just going to kind of go over the basics and elaborate as we go um, so you'll have a good understanding of um, what your student needs from ninth grade moving forward. Um, so we'll take a look at the school year at a glance. Um, we'll talk about some pathways, attendance policies, scholarships, um, ways for your child to get involved, um, testing, and how to stay connected. Next slide. So just to introduce ourselves, um, tonight we have Mr. Tate, um, Ms. Harwell, and Ms. Walker um, joining us in the guidance department. As you can see, um, the roles are listed. Um, these are the, the people that you're going to see really working one-on-one -on -one, um, with your students in guidance. Um, for counselors, we have Elizabeth Harwell, and her caseload um, is A, last names A through G-I. Um, again, myself, Erin Lowry, and then my uh, caseload is students with the last names GJ through M. And then we have Mr. Tate, and then his caseload is going to be all students with last names N through Z. Um, our graduation coach um, is Tion Turner, um, and we'll touch on credit recovery a little bit later um, tonight. And we'll tell you all about um, what Ms. Turner is doing with, with those students. Our registrar is Ms. Gayla Ellis, um, attendance clerk, Diana Starr, and records clerk, Marjorie Vaughn. So let's just take a look at the school year at a glance. Um, so one of the questions I often get from parents is um, for brand new ninth graders is, how things go as far as grades are concerned. So grades are going to be different than they were in middle school. So understand that your students are enrolled in seven classes. Um, everyone has an academics. And for the most part, the academics is non-credit bearing. So they won't be receiving credit for academics during third period, unless it's, unless it's a credit bearing academics, like if they're in yearbook, um, or FFA or something like that. But most students are going to have a non-credit bearing academics. So those uh, six classes run all year long, first semester and second semester. We don't start over um, in the winter semester. The classes keep going. Um, so the final grades are not going to be available until the end of the year. And then those grades will be available on the transcript. Um, so there's no stopping point at which, you know, students um, receive mid-year grades. The grades are continuously rolling. With that being said, um, it's important to note that um, the students, it, it's easiest for them to keep up with their grades. It's easier to maintain something than to fall behind. So when you first tell students that, sometimes they're like, oh, well, I, I have a while to do this. Mm -hmm. Don't need to worry about um, acing this class right away or, or passing right away. Um, but as the months go on, that class gets harder and harder if things go missing. So we encourage them to keep up um, a good, healthy average in the class so that way they, you know, they're in a good place by the time the end of the year rolls around. So final grades are issued at the close of the school year, and you will see those um, on the transcript. Um, so the student, when they receive their, their transcript, ninth grade year, that's the first set of grades that they're ever going to have um, for high school. And that's what colleges or technical schools will be looking at. So I can't tell you how important um, that ninth grade year is. Um, my students always ask, you know, are people looking at middle school grades or, you know, how I did in sixth grade, seventh grade? No, you really get a fresh um, start. The, the slate is clean. So they're looking from ninth through 12th. So that's super important. So everybody gets a fresh start. Um, it's really important for students and their parents to check Infinite Campus regularly. Um, and there's two different accounts. The student account, they can, that's where they're going to be able to um, see their grades 
um, and see what they need to do. And then the parent account, you can be checking that. If you're not sure how to set up Infinite Campus, our media center specialist can help you. If you visit the, the Eastside webpage, um, there's also a tech um, area, a tech page where it'll give you a video and all the instructions for how, how to set up your account. And that's a really good way to stay on top of everything. And then every four and a half weeks, you'll see that progress reports are issued. So every four and a half weeks, um, those progress reports are coming out. Um, also, let me just throw in there um, while I'm speaking to you guys that we do have the chat open. So as, as you have questions, as we move along through the presentation, if there's anything you're wondering or you have a question, just feel free to throw it out there. Um, so how do students get promoted from grade level, one grade level to another? Um, we always tell students that we don't go by the number of years that you're here, but rather the number of credits that you accumulate. So like I said, um, in ninth grade, you have a total of six classes. We want all students to pass those six classes. However, they have to pass at least five in order for them to be promoted to sophomore status. Um, this is also important with eligibility if students are playing sports. They're not going to be eligible um, if they're not passing at least five classes. And for ninth graders, the first time that's checked is mid-year. Um, so that's really important to know. If, if you have a student athlete, they need, they need to be on top of that so that they can also be eligible to play. So students receive one unit of credit every time they can successfully complete a class. So like I said, sophomores receive five credits. Um, it, to jump to junior status, you're gonna need um, to have 11 credits. And then finally for senior is a total of 17. So that's how we classify students as far as grade level goes. Um, earlier, I did mention um, Ms. Tian Turner and she's our graduation coach. Um, if a student gets in a position where they fail a class, they can recover that class in credit recovery. So we can give them the class in, in an online format over the summer or during the year so that they um, can, can catch up and they can make that class up. So we do offer those credit recovery classes, but we try to really encourage students to pass classes so they're not in a position where they're taking a full load here at school and then also trying to balance their credit recovery classes online. Um, so if you look at the graduation requirements, um, you're going to see a total of 23 credits necessary to graduate. Keep in mind that this is not the only thing that's required. Um, remember that it's not just 23 credits to graduate. These 20 credits have to be in the right classes. So if you look at everything that's listed below, you're going to see the breakdown. Um, you've got four English, four social studies, and four math, four science. So your student is going to take one of these every year that they're here. They're always going to have an English class, a social studies class, a science, and a math. Um, in addition, the students also need a total of six elective credits. So you'll see how those are broken down. The first set of electives um, needs to come from one or a two or a combination of the three areas that you're seeing. The first one listed is CTAE. Um, that's our career technical and ag agricultural education. So these are classes like agriculture, business, marketing, um, the foods classes, things like that. Um, or they can take foreign language um, or they can take fine arts. So three of those credits have to come from that area. The last three are general electives, meaning they can be anything. They can be more of what I just mentioned, or they could be like, you know, a senior, a student aide um, for a period, or maybe um, it's a team sports class or something like that. It can be anything. And then they also are required to take um, a year of PE and health. They'll have PE one semester and health for the other semester. I do want to note um, at the bottom, foreign language is not a requirement for graduation at Eastside. I always present this to my students in the classroom as a trick question. And I ask them, I say, hey, do you guys need foreign language to graduate? And 90% of the class always tells me, yes, I do. You do not. 
However, you do need it if you're planning on attending a four-year school. Not for us, but the four-year college or university is going to require that you have two years of a foreign language before um, they will admit you. Um, so the language we, languages, languages we have available are Latin, Spanish, and French. And students would have to take two consecutive years of each of those. You can't mix them up. I can't do one year of Spanish and my second year of French. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown there. Um, that is a good transition to pathways. So at Eastside, we have pathways. Um, and a pathway is pretty much just um, a personalized educational experience in a certain area. Um, I always tell my students it's kind of like a minor while you're at high school. And so I can choose to have a pathway in any of the areas that you see below. And a pathway traditionally is going to take three years to complete, although there are some pathways that only take two years to complete. So if we look below, um, your students have a choice of CTAE pathways. Um, they have the family consumer science, they have business, that particular pathway is only two years. Um, we have digital design, marketing, two years, engineering and technology, and agriculture. If they choose to do a fine arts pathway, we have band, chorus, drama, and visual arts. Um, and then we have two other pathways that are a little bit different. If your student decides to pursue an academic, advanced academic pathway, they would take two years of a foreign language that they need for college in any AP class. If they take an AP class in ninth grade, they take an AP class in 11th grade or 12th grade, the combination of those three classes would equal an advanced academic pathway. The last pathway we have available is the, the world language. That would be three years of a foreign language. So, don't, so remember, they don't need to have three. They only need two for college. But if they just really love language or they wanted to, to do a third year, they could certainly do that and complete the world language pathway. And many of our students complete more than one pathway. They might complete two or three. And sometimes not even really because they're trying to. It's just because it happens that way because of the setup of their classes. All right, so speaking of pathways, I just shared with you what we offer. However, some students um, elect to go to Newton College and Career Academy because there's a variety of pathways there that we don't have here. So um, all of the schools in the county um, send their students to the Newton College and Career Academy. Um, but those students always have first period with us um, because we're their base school. So if your student decided they wanted to attend Newton College and Career Academy, they would always be a first, they would be an Eastside student, um, but they, they would have first period with us and then the bus would take them over for the remainder of the day to the Newton College and Career Academy. Um, so some of the pathways offered, I've just listed a few, but there's um, a whole lot. Um, they have early childhood education, they have cosmetology, veterinary science, nursing, um, they have law, they have construction. Um, and the cool thing is that their classrooms, a lot of their classrooms are set up to where they're very hands on and lab oriented. So for example, the cosmetology program is a full out salon, just the way that you would see if you were to walk into an establishment. Um, the early childhood education, they actually are working with the pre-K students on campus. So they're getting a lot of hands-on experience. Um, your student can apply for the Newton College and Career Academy as early as December. Um, I spoke with their counselor a little earlier this week, and she wasn't quite sure um, exactly the dates that um, the applications would be out, but she did say to keep um, eyes open for December. Um, usually the application is open for like a month window of time. The student gets online, they apply, and then they have the opportunity to do an open house. Um, so some things that they look at as far as acceptance are going to be grades, attendance, and behavior. Um, and then the student will receive the final decision um, via email. And at that point, they would need to decide um, what they wanted to do. And I will note um, or tell you that 
Newton College and Career Academy starts their recruiting in the 10th grade. So basically your ninth graders now could apply for next year as a 10th grader. If you have an older student, a 10th or 11th grader, they could still apply. Um, but the younger they are, it's better because they get a chance to finish out their pathway there. Because remember, we said that pathways usually take three years to complete. Um, so let's run over attendance. Um, the last couple of years with COVID and the pandemic, um, you know, it, it was a lot harder to deal with attendance and everything. So it almost feels strange to me going over attendance now. Um, but this, um, the attendance still stands and it's really important because we always say, um, if students are gonna do well, they need to be here. Like the learning process, is so very important. So if they're not here, they're gonna miss so much. So we encourage them, them to be here as often as they can. Um, so students who acquire 11 or more unexcused absences in any class, they will not receive credit for the class. So each student um, receives a total of five parent notes that they can turn in. So if your student is sick or they're not feeling well, um, they can't come, or maybe there's a family function or whatever the case may be, you have five parent excuses to turn in. You would need to write a note and have your student um, turn it in, or you could email it. Um, and it has to be turned in within three days in order for us to clear it and mark it as excused. After the five parent notes, that's when absences start to turn into unexcused absences, and that's where the danger can start. Um, because if a student starts acquiring absence after absence and they've already used their excuses, they're gonna be in trouble as far as credits go. They may not get credit for their class, even if they have a 90 or a 100 in that class, if they have missed 11 or more days. Um, please note that doctor's notes or notes from the court, we can take as many of those as possible and those will be excused. Um, but I just encourage you to keep up with the attendance because um, it's super important. Um, I am going to let Ms. Harwell um, take it from here with um, GPA. Great, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Lowry. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Harwell. Um, Glad that y'all are with us tonight. So I wanna talk about GPA. So it's really important for your student to understand the different GPAs that they're gonna deal with. So the one that they're probably most familiar with right now would be their, um, their cumulative GPA, which I call mainly their like internal ESI e e GPA. We use it for undergrad status, um, for top 10. Um, some scholarships actually will ask for a cumulative, um, but that's really about it. So what colleges and for Hope Scholarship, what they're looking at is, a, is, is an academic GPA. So you have your academic GPA, which is what colleges calculate. So when students have to send their transcripts in for college admissions, colleges take that transcript and they calculate their own GPA. And they're looking at core classes, they're looking at foreign language, and they will look at some um, of the AP electives, sometimes those fourth sciences. So it's important for students to understand that a lot of their elective grades um, aren't going to count in their academic GPA. So HOPE GPA is calculated by Georgia Student Finance Commission. So students can access that GPA um, on Georgia Features. And so definitely I would ask your student, hey, do you know how to log in to Georgia Features? Because it's really important that they look at that. So HOPE is a little different how they calculate it. So the most important thing is we don't calculate that. That is strictly Georgia Student Finance Commission and you have to look at it in Georgia Features. So they're looking at your academic classes foreign language. They're also looking at some of those fourth sciences students take, for example, food science, um, general horticulture. Um, and if you need more clarification on that, I'm happy, reach out to me. I'm happy to answer that. There's a list of them. So another um, difference with HOPE GPA is those high school classes that your students take in middle school. So if they took physical science um, or algebra one, those will not count in their HOPE GPA. And the reason for that is HOPE will only count classes that you physically take in a high school. So even though they're taking high school classes in middle school, they're getting credit for those to meet their graduation requirements. Colleges are more than likely gonna look at those as, as well because they are graduation requirements. Hope is not gonna count those. So it's just important to understand that. Um, okay, next slide. 
Um, real quick too about Georgia Futures, you can actually log in and pull up your child's HOPE GPA report and it will show you how the different classes are weighted. It shows you which classes actually count in GPA. It'll show you rigor courses. It's really helpful information. Um, it's called their student detail report and it's in there. I really encourage you to have your student log in and look at it. So, all right, next. Okay, so HOPE Scholarship. HOPE Scholarship, we talked about classes that count towards calculating your HOPE GPA. So you are required to have a 3.0 for HOPE Scholarship. And that is calculated after you graduate, obviously when all your final grades are in. Now they do what they call progress reports. So you can look um, at your HOPE GPA year to year. Um, of course, the, the GPA that you know, you're gonna get HOPE Scholarship, the eligibility is not gonna be until you graduate. But it's a good thing to monitor. And honestly, every year I have seniors who finish out the year and they have a 2.92 HOPE GPA. Well, that means they don't get HOPE Scholarship. And it's, I really hate to see students miss it by that little bit, but it really, I mean, that's a lot of money they're leaving on the table. That really could equal anywhere from $6,000 to $9,000 in a year. So make sure that they're aware of that. Their senior year, they always, sometimes they don't want to look at it because they're worried what it might be, but make them look at it. That way, you know what you're working with. You kind of know what you need to do your senior year to get to that 3.0. Um, so there's Zell Miller as well. Um, Zell Miller is a 3.7 and there's some testing requirements. Um, rigor requirement, you have to have four considered rigorous courses. You can see what those are in Georgia features. And I think some people think, oh, it has to be AP courses. That's not true. Honestly, most kids will automatically get their rigor requirement just from their basic classes that they take. Rarely have I seen a student who doesn't meet the rigor requirement who wants to go to college. So most of the classes that you're gonna need to take to go to college, you're gonna meet that rigor requirement. That is something you still need to pay attention to. Um, okay, I mentioned Zell Miller. 3.7, same thing, HOPE GPA. There is a testing requirement. You have to have a 26 minimum on the ACT and a minimum of 1200 on the SAT. So the past couple of years when schools have been, a lot of colleges have been test optional. So that we've had kids who haven't taken the ACT or SAT at all. We have kids who are in college now who never took it. So what they did for Zell Miller, they're still requiring that test component, but they just extended the amount of time you have to actually meet that requirement. So we actually have students who are freshmen in college right now who can still meet that requirement to qualify for Zell Miller. As of right now, I'm seeing most schools um, I'm seeing most of our students are able to test. So the test optional thing really comes in when, you know, uh, testing sites are getting closed because of COVID. It's getting canceled. Dates are getting canceled. You know, they're trying to send you to another state to take it. So right now, like I said, schools in the state of Georgia are mostly requiring test scores. It could go test optional. I don't know that I really see that happening. And also there are a lot of schools and it really kind of um, just kind of progress that a little bit more this past year, there are a lot of colleges that are going test optional anyway. So just pay attention to that. And if your student wants to go, for example, you know, to a technical college and they know for a fact they want to, they don't really need to take the ACT or SAT. And they can use what we call HOPE grant um, for scholarship. So Zell Miller 3.7, the biggest thing to remember and the testing requirement as well. Okay, so HOPE Grant, the difference in HOPE Grant and HOPE Scholarship. HOPE Scholarship is for two-year and four-year schools. HOPE Grant is for technical colleges. So there's no GPA requirement. So you're eligible just by graduating from high school. Um, right now, you can pretty much go to a technical college for zero cost because you're gonna be eligible for HOPE Grant you do have to maintain a certain GPA while you're in school, but they also have HOPE Career Grant that a lot of times can bridge the difference in what HOPE Grant pays for into what it actually costs. So we have a lot of students who are paying nothing for, you know, for technical colleges. It's a really good thing to look into, um, especially if, you know, we have students who, you know, they're not going to be HOPE Scholarship eligible. They can't really afford to pay for college tuition. So they may start out at a technical college with HOPE Grant and then transfer after that. Um, so just make sure you understand the difference in those. Um, okay, next slide. Um, okay, SAT, I talked a little bit about test optional. Um, I think Mr. Tate is gonna take over from here. All right, good evening, y'all. Um, and while Ms. Harwell did speak about test optional, uh, it still varies from school to school, all right? So some schools have become test optional, some have not. So, and, and that being the case, is, is it might be better to look at the school first and see 
and then take the SAT or ACT. Um, here are the test dates for the SAT. Um, unfortunately, none of these test dates are at Eastside. Um, a lot of them will be at Georgia Piedmont, no, Georgia Perimeter, um, which is Georgia State. But we, we do encourage them to take the test, um, depending on what school they want to go to. For technical schools, it's not necessarily you know, necessary to take it, but for the four-year institutions and colleges and whatnot, they, you know, in most cases, what do you take this test, all right? Um, as far as the scores, they vary by schools. You know, some schools have higher requirements as far as test scores. Others have, you know, more moderate um, test scores. But regardless, you know, um, if they're interested in a four-year institution or college, they, wanna, they might want to check and, and see that they have to take that exam. Can I say something real quick, right. Mr. Tate? Something Please I forgot to say. So a lot of two-year schools are also doing something where if you have a certain G GPA, um, so maybe like a 3.2 or higher, then they're waiving test requirements as well. Right. So pay attention to that. Right. Um, that. That's a big thing right now. And I will say this, and Ms. Walker maybe can speak more about this, but I do see a trend and I kind of see maybe test scores, they can help you if a school um, and so, so some schools will require test scores. They won't even look at your application without it. But I'm hearing more and more that they really, those scores aren't hurting kids. They can only help them. So, Correct. you know, you have a student, your student has a 4.0, they're very strong in every other area. They can still get into a really good school, even if their test scores are not the best. Um, so I really see a trend where they're only helping students and mostly not hurting students. And like I said, Ms. Walker, I think can talk more about that. Right. All right, so here are the ACT scores. Now, while it's not a presentation, there's one thing I do want to talk about, and we'll ramp up on it in the springtime. For dual enrollment, for students interested in doing dual enrollment, and for those who don't know, dual enrollment is the opportunity to take college classes while still enrolled in high school. Now, it's open to our juniors and seniors. So our, our current sophomores who are interested in next year or our current juniors who are interested in the next year, um, you would need to take one of these tests. Um, for most colleges to, to do dual enrollment. And I'll talk more about, more about that in spring, but at least have that on your radar that if your student is interested in doing dual enrollment, they would need to take either the SAT or the ACT before uh, applying or before getting admitted for dual enrollment. Uh, all right, so the ASVAP, in the same regard, for those interested in the military, for any students who would, would maybe want to go to the military, the ASVAP is offered at our school normally once a year. The test date for this year is going to be November 30th. That's the last Tuesday of the month, November 30th. If you want to sign up, please have them come to the council department. We have a, uh, a barcode that they can scan and they can sign up right there on the phone. All right. And juniors and seniors are the ones we're, we're looking at to take this test. Now, say your kid does not want to go to the military, but they don't know what they want to do. The ASVAB is also good to kind of figure out what jobs will be, they will be good at, what skills they have that, you know, will be good for them to go into. All right. So again, even if they don't want to go to the military, it's a great test to take um, for that purpose as well. All right, activities. All right, so obviously as, as uh, the other counselors have said, you know, we look at the holistic student. You want the students when they apply to these schools or a technical school not to be uh, well-rounded as far as academics, but you want also to stand out in other things, whether it be um, groups, clubs, or whatnot. So here's some activities we offer at the school. Um, most teachers do sponsor a club at school, so we have a lot of opportunities for them to, to get involved in something that caters to their interests. Um, myself and Ms. Larry have a club uh, called Social Strength, which is uh, more geared towards the uh, social, emotional, and the mental health aspect. But as you can see, there's a lot of clubs that we have. And, and most times, students can find something they cater to or they like that they can get involved in, all right? Um, stay connected. So we're very active on Twitter. We post scholarships. We post updates about things happening in the school. So if you have a Twitter account and you're active on Twitter too, please follow us. Um, we're on Facebook. And if you have individual concerns that you want to address with the individual counselor for your student, our emails are right there. Um, also, our college and career specialist, Ms. Walker, her email is there as well. Um, Ms. Walker, are you... Are you next, ma'am? I believe I am, if you're finished. That's the next slide. Oh, who has my slides? <laughs> Ms. Walker, while we try to figure that slide issue out, maybe you could um, mm -hmm. Parents, your role and what you do. 
Okay. Um, so my name is Miss um, Alicia Walker. I'm a college and career specialist. Previously, the last three years, I um, was called a college and career readiness specialist. And we still say that what we do is college and career readiness for students throughout Newton County. Um, we have changed our roles um, recently. We have transitioned to different things. Um, before, I was working with seniors primarily, helping them with scholarships and SAT and ACT and going to college and or getting an apprenticeship or getting an internship and getting jobs. Um, now I am the early planning lead where I work with eighth, ninth and 10th graders. We help them build a foundation for um, what they're gonna do for when they get to 11th, 12th grade and beyond high school so that they have a good foundation started. Um, a lot of things that I do tell the students are a lot of things they already heard, but I've but it's great to be reiterated. A lot of times students will say, well, I've never heard that before. I'm like, well, no, the counselors probably told you at some point. Um, and so I'm here to make sure they understand and go in more in depth in what they need to do. Um, so like for instance, for ninth grade lit, um, I went to all the ninth grade classes at Eastside talk about Hope Scholarship and to talk about GPA and transcript and what that means for them and not doing something that's going to be detrimental for them when they get um, to the later grades. Um, previously, I had a lot of students who would get to 12th grade and think that once they got there, they can turn things around for them uh, for their GPA because they really want to go to college. And like you can, um, it just may not be that impactful um, once you get to 12th grade. So making sure they understand that it's important starting in ninth grade to do well and to understand um, that the grades actually count in ninth grade and beyond. Is the slide still there coming up maybe? <laughs> I am looking for it. Just give gotcha. me one It's okay, because I just had two slides, so it's okay. <laughs> Gotcha. Um, and so things I do, I still do college and career readiness with students. Um, if a student who's a senior who still needs additional help, I will still meet with the student because currently there's, um, I'm not in the building at Eastside, but if a student calls and needs help, then I, I will come there to help the student or a parent. Um, also, I help with um, classroom um, lesson plans for students. And I do some community referrals, so like for 4-H or anything else outside, like SAT prep, if they need additional things like that, I can help that as well. Um, for financial aid information, I help with that too. For scholarship information, I do all those things still. Even if I'm not in the building, um, I used to be in at Eastside four days a week. I'm no longer there four days a week, but I'm still able to help if you have additional questions for me. Don't worry about the slides, Erin. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I was just going to any... say, I, I just found it, but I think that you covered everything that was on. <laughs> gotcha. If there are any questions for me, if you need any assistance, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'll drop my um, email in the chat box. Um, we had a question about clubs at Eastside for a career academy students. Um, they can join clubs that uh, that you know meet before or after school, and also there are clubs at uh, the career academy they can join as well. You know, so I want again we want everyone who have who wants the opportunity to join a club to have an opportunity to be involved in the club. All right. Uh, we're still in the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat. We can address them directly in the chat or we can address them in this platform as well. Um, I know it was mentioned, I'm oh, sorry, Erin, you wanna say something? No, go ahead. <laughs> it was mentioned about test optional schools and yes, a lot of schools are test optional. I know USG has gone back to having um, testing with ACT and SAT. Um, if a school is test optional, um, and you want a scholarship from the institution itself, a lot of them will not um, grant that or even look at the application without a test score. So if you really want your child to be able be eligible for an institutional scholarship, it'll be in their best interest to take the SAT or ACT. Um, and the first time should be probably in um, the spring semester of your junior year to take it, to get a good foundation to see where deficits may be and to get that additional help and then take it again. 
Um, in the chat, I also put the um, websites to take these tests. I think it's important to mention um, sometimes parents and students get, get confused, especially um, in the younger years, they thinking that maybe the ACT is something that Eastside offers or that um, you know, the SAT is offered here. While Eastside can be a testing location, it's not a test that Eastside actually offers. You have to get online, act.org or collegeboard.org and sign up for the test. And you need to kind of do that in advance because it's a month or a month and a half out um, with deadlines and everything like that. Um, so you're going to find the testing information, the schedules, and lots of practice options available on those websites. And if your student needs help signing up for the ACT or SAT, we do that all the time. We help them. So that's not a problem either. Um, and I want to add something too when I was talking about GPA um, and Hope and Zell Miller. And I'm so used to talking about seniors. I've always been the senior counselor, so sometimes I get ahead of myself. But this really is good information for your students. Um, it can help them set goals. You know, it seems like a long time away, but those of you who have older kids, you understand it goes really fast. And sometimes if you bring that relevance to it, then they start making the connections of why do I need to take these certain classes? Well, let's look at what, you know, if you want to go to college, what, what do they want? What are they looking for? How are you going to get this GPA? Um, so I think it's really important for students to start setting goals for that. I don't mean overwhelm them. And, you know, we don't want that. Some kids, maybe, you know, you, you have to pull back on that a little bit. Some kids are really gung-ho. They want to map out their whole plan. Like my daughter, they want to know exactly what they're going to take every year. And there's nothing wrong with that if your child is taking the lead on that. But I do find that, you know, having them become familiar with this makes it easier by the time they are a junior or a senior, and it's not all new information, um, and it's familiar. And I think, you know, it does bring relevance, um, and it makes them think a little bit more um, about what they want to do, what classes they want to take. And I want to say, too, so when they start asking about AP classes, your student does not have to take a ton of AP classes if, if that's not the right fit for them. Dual enrollment is great for, you know, to prepare for college. In fact, you know, dual enrollment is great in the sense that they're actually enrolled in a college class and it functions just like a college class will when they're on the college campus. So I find, you know, if you really, if your child wants rigorous courses, I think um, a combination of dual enrollment and AP can be really good. Um, but just those are conversations. And if you have any questions about that, reach out to one of, you know, to your child's counselor. We are happy to discuss that with you. It's a lot to just know. So we welcome your questions um, and we're happy to help you always. Um, just real quick too, I know we were talking about um, the Career Academy. Um, please note that those students are, you know, welcome to join in clubs and activities as well. Um, they get the best, best of both worlds. They have the Career Academy and then Eastside is their base school, so they're more than welcome to, you know, they're an Eastside student, so they can participate in everything um, that full-time Eastside students um, would participate in. Um, so at this point, we're going to just wrap up the meeting, but we want to make sure that we address any other questions that you guys might have. Um, so if you want to just take a minute and just throw out anything in the 